Good afternoon, folks, and thanks for joining us. My name is Tim Wheaton with Low Kick MMA, joined by the undefeated UFC featherweight, Lerone Murphy. Lerone, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great, man. Sunday morning. Couldn't be better. Couldn't be better. Now, you're just coming off a huge knockout win over Makwan Amir Khani. Uh, congratulations on this one. It, you looked really good in the match. What's your assessment of it? How do you feel about your performance? Yeah, I don't think it was the best performance, but I got the job done. I stuck, stuck. The game plan was to just get through, get making work the first round, stay tight. Um, obviously, don't get submitted. That's his game. Get through that first round and then in the, push the pace in the second and third and then it come off. No, absolutely. Now, he was the fighting hope of an entire nation. How do you feel knowing in your heart that you ruined the fighting hope of it for everyone in Finland? <laughs> nah, it's not that deep. I don't look into it like that. I'm looking at, I'm looking at the man in it. I just need to win the fight, whoever it is, whatever. I don't care what they're going on on their side. I just want to win. Absolutely, man. Now, your opponent, you were scheduled for UFC 286 at the O2 Arena in London. Your opponent dropped out. And I know you said on Twitter just yesterday, I'm getting the same questions. 3,000 times a day. So I'm not going to ask you who you want. Instead, what, what I will ask you is you can pick anyone. It doesn't even have to be a real person. It can be a video game character, an anime character, living, <laughs> dead, a YouTube celebrity. I don't care. Who is your fantasy pick? For, who would you pick in a fight? You can pick anyone in the universe. To fight? Yes. It would obviously be McGregor, isn't it? That's the, that's the, biggest, that's the biggest fight in the world. Everyone I knows that. Like, no one needs to shy away from that. Everyone knows that's the biggest fight in the world. And it's like, it's not that I've got anything against him or anything like that. It's just like, that's the biggest fight. That's going to bring the most eyes to me. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely, man. So UFC 286, we're going to do Lerone Murphy versus Conor McGregor. This is the scoop. This is the headline I'm running with, right? <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> no i'll throw a couple of featherweights at you and then you can let me know rather than you just sort of like picking random people and then you can let me know how you think you would do in a fight against that person so i want to start with the bruce leroy alex caceres how do you think you do against him i think i'd beat him he's it's good so very good but i think i beat him what about someone like a, a nate landweir as matched up against him as well oh Them that's right too so if, if if I would have come out, if I would have won against Nathaniel, I would have called out the winner of that fight because that's the week after. That would have been a perfect fight. Man, just crazy. Man, man, it's like they're just trying to get you the best matchups, but it is, it, things keep falling apart. Two cancelled fights in a row. How, how does it feel? How do you feel? It's just frustrating. Just want to get back in there, right? Yeah, I'm just dying to get back in there, man. It's been too long. It's been like 14 months now. So, man. get back in there. Get active again. How's everything feeling in the gym? How's training coming along? Oh, it's feeling great. You know, I feel, I feel good. I feel fit, ready to go. Um, I'm healthy, three weeks out. So realistically, I've only got one one more hard week and then we taper, taper off. Oh, that's right. You're going to be fighting at UFC 286. Headlined by Leon Edwards versus Kamaru Usman. What's your prediction for that fight? I think, I think Leon Edwards gets it done, you know, again. Um, I feel like... When you're a fighter like Kamaru Usman and you've been on a big run like that and then you get KO'd bad, you're not going to come back the same fighter. Plus, there's other factors that come into it. Rock is at home. Um, another big factor was that in the, in the second fight where he lost the belt, um, there was high altitude and Rocky looked very gassed. And I think that, I think that was a big, big, big part to pay because if you think about it, Leon won the first round. And then he started to get tired, you know what I'm saying? So that's the way I look at it, but we'll let, let's see, innit? Oh, yeah, we got, we got Leon Edwards, who's at sea level. But Kamara Usman, I think you need a lot of time after getting knocked out, especially that that bad of a knockout. You need time to recover. I'd say a year, minimum. That was a bad, that was a bad one, I'd say a year. Well, yeah, I agree with you. Now, let me ask you, this weekend, upcoming, John Jones is making his comeback. He's going to be fighting Cyril Gone. Does he still yeah. have it? What's your prediction? What do you see in this one? I feel like it's the perfect fight, fight to find out because uh, Cyril Gans quick, he's young, he's fresh, um, so we'll, we'll find out. But I just feel like if John Jones gets hold of him, if, if Nganu can outgrapple him, then if Jones gets hold of him, it, it, it's done. But I think Cyril Gans going to light him up on the feet and then Jones is going to end up getting hold of him at some point. You, you think John Jones still has it? Still, he's going to be superior in the wrestling. It's just a matter of like his age, wear and tear, right? 
I think he's. I think he'll still have it though. I think he'll still have a year. We'll see in it. We'll see. But I think he'll still have a year or two in him, especially at heavyweight. They're a bit slower there, aren't they? Yeah, a little bit. So a lot of people are going to be traveling overseas. A lot of, especially Americans, will be coming here to in, to England to watch you fight at UFC 286. What are some UK exclusive foods that you say like if you're here, you have to try this? Is there something particular that people need to go out of their way for? Fish and chips. Definitely. Straight. <laughs> straight english number one i no i'd say a roast dinner actually a ro- like yorkshire puddings the ro- um, roast potatoes gravy if you eat chicken or whatever that stuff i feel like that's the that's the number one uk dish i'd say nah. is that the thing you miss most from when you're cutting weight i'm gonna eat that today no <laughs> way <laughs> but my weight's good right now i'm like 74 key and I, I need to be fight week. I need to be seventy two key. So I'm I'm still eating a lot of carbs now. All I do need to do next week is cut them out and then boom, I'm right there. Unreal, man. Unreal. You were certainly called the miracle for a reason, right? <laughs> Just cutting weight perfectly. All that good, good stuff. Speaking of that, do you ever? You you were saying like I'm sick of being asked the same questions. Do you ever get yeah. sick of people a- asking you like, hey, you were shot to like ten years ago? Do you get sick of people asking you this? Yeah, don't know. <laughs> It is. I can imagine. But I think, like, it just gets worse from here. You're only going to get more famous. True. So I let get me ask... it. Though. Yeah, go on. Go on. No, I get it, though. Like, people, like, are intrigued by it, it. So I do get it. But it does get boring, like, answering the same question every day. But, yeah. So let me ask you a different question, then. Your prosthetic teeth, do you, how often do you have to get them touched up? Or are they set and that's it for life? Life. Fine. No big deal there. It's done. Now, 50 Cent had said he had the uh, something similar where he was shot, you know, ha- has some bullet left in the in the tongue. And he said it really helps yeah. in the bedroom. True or false? It what? He 50 Cent said that the bullet left in his tongue really helps in the bedroom. True or false? <laughs> 50 Cent's a crazy man. <laughs> no problem. I won't make you elaborate further on that one. So you were a foot- UK footballer turned to MMA. Let me ask you, yeah. is it ever coming home? Yeah, at some point, but not yet. At next World point. Cup? I- I- next World Cup? Next Euros? Maybe the Euros, I'd say. They get, they're, I feel like they're just rebuilding the team now, innit? so maybe five, ten years, five years. No, absolutely, absolutely. Your your son, he's I think five or six now, I believe. Uh, would you rather him go into football, into MMA, or, or choose something else? Uh, I don't think I'd want him to fight anyway. I want him to learn how to fight just for the discipline of it, but I, don't, I wouldn't want him to fight. Oh, Obviously, that's... if he had choice, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't want him to. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and he, he was a huge motivation for you. Uh, does it also help with nerves, especially going into big fights, kind of remembering what you're doing this for? You know, I don't help with nerves because either way you're going to fight in it, but it does help with motivation though, because it's not just me in it. Like, do you know what I'm saying? You're doing it for a reason, right? Yeah, but it's not just that reason, but it's just it's a, it's an ad- additional motivation in it because I was doing that before he was born in it. I was fighting before he was born, but um, mm. yeah, additional. So, so how do you handle nerves before big fights? A lot of people talk about how much they struggle with that sort of thing. How do how do you calm yourself down, focus on the fight? Some I don't know. It's weird, you know. Some days, some fights you have like massive nerves, like uncontrollable, but and some some fights you just like. Is what it is. It's what it's, it's. I don't know. It's weird. Like the last fight I had, like a, it felt like I was going to sparring. Like I wasn't bothered. And then I think the fight before that, I was like in the changing rooms. I'm, no, I was in in the hotel room on my own. I'm like, fuck. Like why do why do I pick? Why did I pick this life? Like it's it is nerve wracking sometimes. But I think it's just I don't know. With preparation comes confidence. I think. With preparation comes confidence. No, that's really good. I like that. But Rashad Evans had talked about that as well. He was saying like, some days you're great, and like I could fight anybody. And then some days yeah. I'm just some days on fight day. I'm like, I don't know. I'm not feeling this one today. It, yeah. It's hard yeah. to like stay focused, right? I just think it's just yeah. It's just so it just depends in it what day it is. Literally, like some like I said in it, and and it would. I feel like 
the matchup part I wasn't bothered about was a harder matchup. Do you get what I'm saying? And the ones you're supposed to win, you might be more nervous for. It just it just depends, isn't it? Yeah, no, yeah. It, being a fighter is a it, it's not a tough vocation. Or sorry, it's not an easy vocation it, by any means. For a lot of people who are now looking up to you or just getting started in the sport, what advice would you pass on to these people? I'd say for a, for a beginner fighter, I'd say make sure that this life is what you want and you and you put all, all your eggs in one basket because if you go half half in, you're not gonna get nowhere, especially in in, in this day and age now. <clears throat> when so many fighters around the world, uh, you have to go all in and make big sacrifices. Yeah, absolutely. It's not an easy thing to do, but sometimes it can be very much worth it. After the fight, are you doing another Jamaican vacation? Oh, you know, I'd love to, you know, I'd love to, but uh, we'll see. I want to stay active this year, though. I don't want to be, I felt like that's where I've been, I've been going wrong, maybe, I don't know, but um, is fighting, having a vacation, going massive in weight and then getting, and then end up getting injured or whatever, but I just want to stay active, I think. All right. So for now, very much focus, very much just like fight season, yeah. fight year, it's your 2023, right? Yeah. Yeah. That. Awesome stuff. I know that you follow some rappers like Meek Mill, 50 Cent. What's on the playlist right now? What's some of the stuff that you're listening to? Tupac, every day. Every day. It's a classic, right? Who's better, Tupac or Biggie? Tupac. No hesitation. No hesitation, man. Easy one. No brainer. Awesome stuff, man. And let me ask you, you got into the sport a little, quite a little while ago. Who are some of the fighters that you looked up to who inspired you? Uh, at the time, John Jones and McGregor. At the time when I started, oh, there is Jones Absolutely. was on fight. McGregor, McGregor was just coming up. Man, McGregor at one forty-five. That was an era. That guy, he was so talented. He was worth the hype. That's when I first started watch watching him. Obviously, for, um, his first fight I watched him was the Brazilian guy. What's his name? Brando. Uh, Diego Brando, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why it's his first fight I watched him. Man, and he was good. Now, he's coming back against Michael Chandler after coaching a season of Tough. He's not in the USADA testing pool, all that other stuff going on, hasn't fought for, uh, you know, two years. Does he still have it in the comeback? What do you think? I think he can beat Chandler, yeah, but I don't think I don't think he beats, like, the other top three lightweights, maybe not, but... I don't know, actually, you know, I don't know. I don't know, you know, we'll see, we'll see. I think he can beat Chanda, though. No, that's fair. And, and, you know, we are going to see, just like you said. Uh, a couple more questions for you, and then I'll get you out of here. Uh, a lot of fighters, like McGregor, do have signature brands, signature whiskeys. Other fighters have signature tequilas, signature whatever. If there was a Lerone Murphy signature brand, what would that brand be? Uh, that's a good question. That's a very good question. Hey. First time you yeah. said that all interview. Thanks. Very good question. Um, that's made me think. I, I think uh, not whiskey, obviously not. Uh, supplements yeah. to help you. What's that I'd say? Supplements, yeah, no, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that, especially for an athlete. Now, and let me ask you as well, last question for you. Where do you envision yourself looking into the future? Five years from now, 10 years from now, how do you see yourself? Five years from now, what would it be? 36. Still be fighting. 36, still be fighting. Um, in the perfect world, be champion. Uh, in 10 years' time, be retired living in Jamaica or Thailand on the beach. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. Awesome stuff. And last word goes to you, sir. Please talk us on out of here. Shout out who you need to shout out. Thank who you need to thank. Last word goes to you, sir. I want to thank myself, firstly, and most importantly, for uh, enduring the last year and getting to this point here now. For, um, for another fight camp. Um, obviously, I'm not there yet. Still waiting for a matchup, but yeah. Awesome stuff. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.